Hey folks, Sean here. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about an update for the episode you're about to listen to with Pat Morell, who's the co-founder of the company that is now called iWin and formerly referred to as Anduin. We previously recorded this episode before they made that branding change. I like the change. I like the new name a lot, but you're going to hear it referred to in the episode as Anduin. The new name is actually iWin. So I wanted to make sure that you are aware of that update change. And it's an excellent episode. Pat, is uh, in the episode talking quite a bit about what the software is capable of, which is some advanced accounts receivable technology and software specific for the accounting industry. And I got to give Pat a lot of credit. He talks about one of my favorite frameworks as a product manager myself in the jobs to be done framework, which makes sure that in fact, you are solving top problems and challenges for your customer. They've incorporated that at iWin. So I'm very excited for you to listen to this episode, but I wanted to make sure that you had that update and you heard it from me here first. So Thank you for listening and enjoy the episode. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm the host, Sean Boyce. I'd like to welcome my guest to the show today, Pat Morell, who's the CRO at Anduin. Hello, Pat. How are you? And thanks for being on the show. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this. Yeah, myself as well. Very excited to talk more about yourself, your background, the work that you do at Anduin. And, but before we get there, if you wouldn't mind, can you share a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today with our listeners? Absolutely. Um, I will say that my background would follow an interdisciplinary career track. I, I started my career after a, a liberal arts education doing sales for a consulting firm in D.C. Um, I actually spent a little bit of time in campaign politics and was on the Hill uh, thereafter. Um, but it was right around uh, 2008, 2009, I left D.C. and, and ended up uh, joining my first startup, a, a, a marketing agency in the Raleigh-Durham area, company that's still around, completely removed from the CPA profession, but I got the startup and technology bug. And really since, since then, uh, I've been on the startup track really ever since. I've worked at a number of different um, kind of high growth uh, tech intensive businesses in, in North Carolina and beyond, had a little... Uh, kind of venture into the Fortune 500 space and ran a big enterprise sales team there for a little bit, but then immediately returned to technology startups. And in 2017, was a co-founder of a healthcare technology business called Digitize AI. And I bring it up because my co-founder in that venture, Justin Adams, is one of my co-founders in the current venture at Anduin. Justin and I had a, a really successful track record at Digitize. That business was acquired in 2019. We took some time off, uh, caught our breath and I uh, got to know our families again because startups can sometimes consume a lot of time. And um, we're, we're in a unique position where right about the time that, that, that uh, unfortunately, COVID was ramping up, we were in a position to start another business and saw some opportunities in professional services. And I'm sure we'll get to the Anduin story uh, as, as we go today, but ended up starting Anduin kind of mid-2020. And it's been, uh, it's been really fun and kind of a rocket ship ever since. So, yeah. Super exciting. Thank you for sharing the background. And I can definitely relate myself, not too dissimilar from you. I started out kind of in corporate or I had the big company experience, but then once I had always more entrepreneurial, sounds like yourself as well too. But once I got that experience working with smaller companies and in particular startups, it's just it's so exciting. There's so much going on, so much cool activity. It's, it's hard not to become immersed in that world. And it's, it's even harder to get out of it <laughs> because it's an exciting place to be. What's that cliche line from Godfather 3? Once, once you thought they were out, they pulled you back in. Yeah, that's how startups <laughs> that's it's, a, it's a unique gravitational pull. And honestly, it, I think for me, it, it you, you get to have that unique position. You really get to be selective about the folks you get to work with, not just colleagues, but then also customers, particularly early stage. And again, I know we'll get to some of the yep. Anduin origins, but um, it's, a, it's wild to think. You know, we started as a team of five co-founders, and now it's 50 58 teamers, as we call the team here. So we're growing quickly. Yeah, It's crazy, man. It's super exciting. I'm looking forward to telling more of that story as well. So let's hop over there next. If that's okay with you. Can you tell us a little bit more about Anduin? Perhaps its story, what it is, and what's going on today? Yeah, so Anduin is uh, we're an AI platform and, and solutions company. We serve particularly uh, the managing partners and the CFOs and the leaders of uh, top 400 CPA firms and, and have actually grown even beyond that top 400 to serve really a, a large swath of, of the, the profession. Our job to be done, kind of why we exist and, and we frame it in that context because AI is exciting and abstract and also um, sometimes uh, difficult to define, but Anduin exists to uh, automate and streamline the work to cash cycle, billing, collections, and payments with the evaluative goal of speeding up cash flow, 
saving partner time and delivering a superior client experience. So you kind of, you take our technology, you plug us in, and those are the outcomes that come out the other side. And the origins of Anduin go back to uh, really a couple of different data points. One, I mentioned, you know, Justin and I were, 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 were co-founders in a previous technology business that was acquired. We had actually a large CPA firm do some of the uh, due diligence advisories we were going through the transaction. And months after, we received a bill in the mail. Uh, and we were, of course, happy with the service, but the bill, it was a strange experience. It was a piece of paper, you know, said for services were rendered and had a big dollar amount on it. And I think Justin actually had to literally like write a check. We hadn't written a check in you know, years at that point. And it was a data point that said, wait, some great service, a long period of time, and then a bill without any context. And we said, okay, let's file that away. That doesn't make sense. And then we observed further as we just did some more research. We actually began interviewing a lot of our, uh, you know, through our network, talking to managing partners, CFOs of pretty large firms in the space. And everybody kept saying, listen, if y'all are going to do anything of, 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 of value, in creating a business to serve professional services firms, you need to focus on accounts receivable. The work to cash cycle, it's broken. There's a lot of time wasted in billing. There's a lot of friction in the collections process. There's, you know, everybody's DSO is growing. So when we had that personal data point from our own experience, and then the collective data point from a lot of different interviews, we said, okay, there's something here. We started and in June of 2020 to explore and, and validate that problem. We launched our platform January 21. Um, and at this point, we're, as I mentioned, you know, pushing 50 people, um, well over several dozen uh, customers in the top 400 ranks and uh, growing like crazy. Because again, the job to be done, you plug us in, it's faster cash flow, it's saving time and it's happy clients. It's pretty compelling. So uh, that's what Anduin does. Yeah. Super exciting. I love the way you described it with the jobs to be done framework as well, too. It kind of lays it out very succinctly for folks so that they get a better understanding how this works and problems you solve. That's kind of where I would go next. I'd love to hear you think through or describe for us some of the iterations in terms of how your target market customers, you mentioned the top 400 CPA firms. Obviously, on this show, we talk a lot about accounting and automation, making and doing yourself a perfect fit. But I'd love to hear how your client, your customer prospects and the representatives for these firms articulate or define these problems in and around what you're describing as that work to cash cycle. Like how does it manifest to them? What, you know, how do they describe it? How do they articulate it? What are some of the symptoms around that problem? So that yeah. listeners from those firms on this show get better understanding in terms of like, you know, how, how does Anduin help me from their perspective? So let's break it down by like role or even, you know, persona be within our firm. Uh, because there's going to be value for people at the very top, managing partners and CFOs. We'll talk about partners and we'll talk about kind of the 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 you know, broadly speaking, the, the support staff within the firm, Excellent. all of them share kind of the first uh, challenge we address, which is every firm we talk to has, is running, and for in some cases, 20 years has been running their practice on like a legacy practice management platform. Um, so think of like a, a CCH or a, a practice CS, a you know, practice engine store. Um, you know, one of our customers was, was on, you know, the McConomy platform from Dell Tech. So we knew early on that there's, I mean, there's in some cases decades of data, like the lifeblood of the firm is kind of coursing through these systems. We needed to create something that was going to be an easy to implement complement to that system. So kind of structurally, how we encourage firms to think about us is, hey, nothing's changing in your PM system. And that's, it's business as usual there. Where Anduin picks up is right when that bill is finalized, because we can basically transpose it, deliver it to clients. And then, you know, we'll talk more about functionality of our system later. But we're a complement to the PM. So that really is kind of pain number one, which for most firms, it's, gosh, we want to do new stuff, but how do we do it when we've got some of this old stuff that in some cases is, of course, enabling the firm, but there's some limitations on what can be integrated. So we, we actually created a unique method for doing that. So once you get Anduin up and running, let's talk about value. For a managing partner, he or she is going to love us because we are unlocking the time of their greatest asset, which is their, their billable professionals, Right. So they love us because of the downstream benefits, which I'll speak to in a moment, and also the insight benefits, because we actually have an insights tool that because we can unlock the data from the practice management system, we're able to serve up intelligence, predictive cash flow models, some really forward-looking analytics that a lot of firm leaders have never had before. Um, and so that's kind of a shared need for the CFO. Now, the CFO loves us because, I mean, again, we're a cash flow accelerant. You plug us in. 
and we can automate the distribution of invoices. We have a collections tool and something that we call smart statements that can tailor and personalize a statement to a client and then actually facilitate payment reminders, which, you know, we read this amazing stat, Sean, early on that told us 60% of the time an invoice is late in professional services. It's because the client actually didn't know what it was doing in the first place. Because historically, they get a piece of paper and it goes on yep. the desk. People are busy and you know we're humans. We make mistakes. So you have to be reminded two, three, four times to pay your bill. And it's not because you're avoiding it. Maybe in some cases you are. But in most <laughs> cases, like a simple, intelligent mechanism for reminders um, actually has a massive kind of throughput effect on people paying their bill. And then we have a quote payment solution, which because we've integrated all these data from the PM through this collections experience, we can present old and current AR. We can let clients save their ACH, their credit card, and it's a one-click payment. They love it. So CFOs love us because the mechanics of collections are dramatically easier and they get foresight into the cash flow. They get faster cash flow hitting the bank account. Partners love us because we obviate the need for them to make those very awkward collections calls at the end of the month. You know, instead of taking that full day to say, okay, let me look at my aged AR. Let me start dialing for dollars. Nobody likes to do that. So our collections tool includes that. Staff love us because we save them an awesome amount of time with reconciling payments and also making those collections calls. Again, there's practice management and then there's Anduin. We can integrate, we basically read the data and we can facilitate all this personalized experience for clients. And then we deliver uh, kind of files or, or uploads that can go back into the PM so that with like an eight second exercise, what would otherwise take you know two days to match kind of a credit card to practice management and ledger we're, we're doing that in one click, basically. So it, again, it distills down into, it's a relief of what has for, in some cases, decades been a real just assumed burdensome pain point. Hey, we're going to spend a couple of days out of every month on something related to collections and payments on a per partner or per staff basis. And we shrink that into, you know, negligible and non-existent time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Getting me excited because <laughs> uh, I'm all about figuring out different ways to save time, be more efficient, especially from these processes. That, and, and they're obviously along the critical path here too, right? Because you're talking about accounts receivable. Very hard to run an operation if the receivables are not coming in in a timely fashion. That is a that can really create a terrible backlog for a firm who's trying to grow from there, choke the business, affect cash flow. There's so many issues that that causes, right? So stop that at its source, which frees up so much more opportunity to do everything else. You mentioned something that I'm curious to learn more about as well, too, in terms of like generating insights. And I want to get to talking about the like intelligent automation-based elements of Anduin as well, too, so that firms can learn more about some of these advanced concepts, which haven't previously been as available to the industry, just kind of getting started here. But you mentioned insights. I'm curious to learn more there as well, too. I can imagine uh, listening, managing partners of firms probably want to know more about like what else can they learn if you know they make a change or they are leveraging a system like Android? So I would say I'll put it through the, the lens of the current state problem. A lot of the firms we talk to, maybe they have at best like a Power BI instance where they're able to look at kind of a, a baseline set of, of analytics. M most firms, even if they have that technological capability, there's a delay on kind of the data that populate it or there's a lag. And 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 that yields kind of a gap in action, fundamentally, because insight dashboards are cool, but they're in effect worthless unless there's correlating action recommendations or easy steps that can be taken as a result of those data. So what we've done, again, because we can hook into the practice management system and read kind of the totality of historical data and, and current and future looking data, or excuse me, we, we would turn it into future looking data because we can read those historical data, We've got a, a very modern, just you know, compelling user interface. And then we allow firm leaders to slice and dice the data on particularly useful vectors. For example, every firm leader we talk to wants to know, okay, who are my problem children? You know, who are those clients that are carrying a lot of AR? I want to see them on a cohort basis. I want to understand if there are trends. So let's break down service line, let's break down geography, let's break down maybe even client industry and show me where the gaps are. Who are my people who really represent a, a problem and challenge to our firm? Concurrently, you know, shine the spotlight inward. Who are our partners who, you know, they work hard, they're doing great work, but they're not owning their, their financial responsibility. They're carrying too much AR, or excuse me, they're carrying too much WIP in that case. Let's frankly provide some stack ranking. We actually had some early customers say, listen, I want to stack rank partners because one, I want to identify who could use some coaching. 
right? Because that's obviously important for, for the next generation. But then two, we want to create some, frankly, productive, competitive pressure. We want you know, kind of carrots and sticks to, to change behavior. So let's, let's make that publicly visible. So it's a better way of staging kind of real time, what is the health of my firm performance data? Subsequent release, and we got some really fun stuff uh, correlating to an announcement in early June, Sean, that um, there's going to be some more future-looking components of the Insights dashboard, a predictive cash modeling index, a scenario modeling environment where a lot of firms, for example, they say, listen, we're at a point where we're completely underwater. Everybody's feeling the effects of great resignation. We need to do some pruning of our client roster. We need to, to make some introductions, hand some, some clients off to maybe other firms in the market. Let's do a cohort analysis. Let's slice and dice, say, what's that percentage of clients that you know, our realization is really low and our rates are low? And frankly, it might not be good business for us anymore. Help us understand the scenario of if we were to maybe raise rates, if we were to hand off those clients, what would that mean in terms of either unlocking new margin opportunity? What would the actual hard effect of that be on the firm? We're going to create that environment where firms can start to make those smarter decisions with actual real kind of live fire data in a safer environment. So step one was unlocking the PM data, right? And that was a Herculean lift to know how to kind of pull all that in. Step two was facilitating the mechanics of kind of the work to cash cycle management, you know, automating collections, et cetera. Step three is now kind of bringing to bear greater insights so firms can make smarter decisions. That's, that's kind of the future of where we see ourselves evolving, kind of a wise counselor to the growth of the firm. Yeah, that's super interesting. I imagine the gears are turning um, listeners' heads as well, too. Learning more about what they can do if they have this kind of data, how I would summarize some of what you're describing as well, too, is not just making better decisions, but having the data to make those decisions. So data-driven yeah. decision-making, right, as in Instead of guessing or using intuition or whatever, we've got the data to back up what appears to be the most intelligent decision for our firm, right? And as you described, a bunch of great examples or use cases for where that might be necessary if your firm is overwhelmed or you need to do like a re revenue segmentation exercise, you want to get a better understanding of the profitability of the different services that you offer, or how you're carving up what it is your firm does. Um, sounds like once Anduin has this kind of data, you can help them learn these insights much more easily and then maintain them moving forward so they can stay on top of them, but then make decisions from it as well. Well, listen, it's a, there, there, there should be a compoundingly kind of virtuous cycle that occurs, right? Like yeah. every partner, every every bill or every staffer is kind of underwater right now because it's it's a busy, busy time in, 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 in the professional space. So you use data to inform where you can, in effect, engineer relief. You know, where, where, yep. where can and should you shed the business and where in doing so it would actually be um, additive to the bottom line of the firm. Exactly. And you do that concurrent to freeing up those same people from some of the rigmarole administrative burdens of the collections and payments process, which you know, no, nobody got their CPA because they want to right. do that, right? So give them insight to where they can enjoy bandwidth, you know, actually deliver the bandwidth. And, and I think what we firmly believe is when you unlock the time of really creative, professionally savvy people, they're going to find ways to create more value for the firm. Every firm we talk to wants to break into you know, a new advisory line. So they want to deliver new services or just give more white love attention to their clients. We, we think we're we're additive toward that that outcome. Um, and so are the data, obviously, as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I have to imagine that is for sure the case. I mean, a big part of the work that I'm doing as well is figuring out how to find the repetitive but time-consuming elements of the work that they're doing today, then getting that time back, but then reinvesting it where we should give us the best ROI, right? The best return on investment, put that time towards the most profitable activities. And then over time, your firm starts to transform into something completely different, which is ideally where a lot of these firms want to go. But for a lot of reasons you just mentioned, it's really difficult to do that right now until you can get some of these insights. So you have the data, it's right in front of you. And then as you mentioned as well too, the next step is relatively obvious as opposed to like flying blind because that's intimidating, right? It's hard to want to make a change from the, what you have been doing to try to want to make things better if you're not armed with the data or you don't have the intelligence or whatever in order to be able to give you that insight, which enables you to be confident about the decision that you choose. That helps get buy-in, you know, you need to convince partners. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, inertia to have to kind of overcome to build momentum in the right direction and then ultimately show them some of these results. So uh, these insights well, got to be helpful when it comes to making those decisions. And, and we're, we're pragmatists and, 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 and humans in the sense that, you know, this is a, this is a people led professional space. It, it, yeah. it really is. And, and so we, we try to infuse that, that recognition so much into our technology in service of that. Cause we realize, okay, we're talking about 
using data to determine either growth opportunities and or scenarios where you know maybe you know client pruning is necessary. And I recognize for a lot of firms that means okay, you may be having a partner who's saying, well, I've been working with client X for ten years, and you know we locked in a rate, we got a good relationship, I like the person, we play golf together, whatever it may be. There's a, a, a human discomfort with kind of changing that professional right. relationship, right? But if the data kind of corroborate that it's in the best interest of the firm and it's going to free up the personnel and it just makes good business sense and you can still do right by the client by you know facilitating an introduction elsewhere or frankly doing right by yourself by raising the rate you charge on an hourly basis right. to what it should be. Um, we don't discount the human element here. We didn't, frankly factor it into how we would then counsel firms to use those data to kind of manage those transitions. Yeah, yeah that's excellent. Well worded as well too. Um, because that I know there are a lot of firms I talk to and they, there's a lot out there in terms of what they can do, but understanding how it makes the most sense and fits into where they are today is a key element in order to kind of empower them to be able to leverage it the, the most effectively as they can at their firm. Um, I want to g- give you some time to talk a little bit more about some of the advanced automation techniques and uh, concepts that Anduin is capable of as well. Also, because I know this is creating a lot of buzz uh, in our industry and in the accounting industry. Can you talk a little bit more about the AI that gets leveraged, the artificial intelligence in a way that you know owners and, and participants and firms can get a better understanding of what it is, how it works, why they should care, and with a platform like Anduin, how you leverage technologies like that to provide them with value in ways that matter to them? Sure. So, I mean, listen, fundamentally AI, and, and I'm sure listeners have probably heard the academic definitions, uh, and, and I'll just restate briefly, AI is basically empowering technology to make decisions and take actions that would previously kind of require human guidance and creative input. And it's not at all to suggest that this technology is a replacement for that human creativity and, 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 and input. It's, it's an augment. We, 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 we subscribe to the, the idea of uh, this concept of mutual learning where systems, you know, an AI can in effect recommend an action. You know, AI recommends humans still decide. Um, and if there are changes or course corrections, you know, those are folded into the system. And in effect, you know, the system and the human kind of grow smarter together. This idea of mutual learning, I think, is quite pragmatic in the case of, say, um, you know, our collections module. So, listen, current state life before Anduin firms will send an invoice. And then on a monthly basis, perhaps, whether it's email or mail, send statements. And then perhaps there's a collections team or partners do this asynchronously or in a decentralized fashion. At a certain point, if a client hasn't paid, you got to make that phone call or send that email to remind. And what we've observed, is particularly as firms grow busier, there's just not time in the day to do that. Um, and it's a poor use of kind of the expensive, billable human professional capital that you have as a firm. So collections is like an easy button autopilot for that. You can, in fact, enroll a client and their invoice in a sequence of messages. You know, send payment reminder on a Monday, send follow up reminder the third Tuesday later. And you can use, in effect, the AI to pull data on that client to personalize the messaging. Hey, client at company X, you know, you have an outstanding balance of Y. Um, here's your personalized you know, presentation of, of, of O to AR. And, and it, 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 it sounds rudimentary, but, it, but the, the, the simplicity is the genius of it, because what's the call to action? You want people to kind of click through and pay their balance. And, and this little bit of personalization and the frequency of engagement is what allows for the perception of a, you know, a smooth experience. And then you use kind of personalized technology to within their payment portal. You know, they're not going to some generic payment portal where they're entering a credit card number again and entering an invoice number. We link all these data together so that somebody kind of clicks their collections email, they're taken to a personalized portal. They see all of their outstanding AR, they see their information, their credit card stuff. It's all saved. It's personalized. It's unique to them. Um, the kind of intelligent automation we use is, is geared to create that, that, personalization. Now, what's exciting, and I think the CFOs out there who are listening will appreciate this, underlying all of this are a number of models that are collecting and monitoring data. And we're starting to see really unique correlations between um, cohorts of clients and the activities of our system. You know, basically correlating, hey, what's the type and frequency of collections message that correlates to faster payment? We can actually start to build almost a behavioral statistical understanding of how to drive you know, faster conversion of payment. And it's not done in a manipulative way. It's done in a way to understand what is it the client needs to hear to take the action that both they and the firm know they should take, which is pay the invoice for valuable services rendered. We're starting to build those data sets to understand 
how we can, frankly, best serve the firm and the client in that engagement. So that's where we see the, the future of this intelligent encounter going. It, it becomes increasingly attuned to the client and it becomes increasing relief to the firm. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah, I'm geeking out thinking about it. It's a creative application of the technology for sure. And it helps move the needle. So uh, in terms of like for people, for people listening to this episode and thinking about, you know, AI as part of this application, sort of learning from past experience in terms of what has worked well in order to predict what might work better in the future as well, too, and then leverage their strategies to improve the results of this, you know, important process along the critical path. Uh, it's super interesting. I, I could definitely see that where just thinking through, I'm thinking through my own routine in terms of like when I do things and when I don't. And uh, everybody has their own routine, right? So I'm sure technology can learn patterns and behaviors in terms of when it may may make the most sense to engage, you know, a, a, basically your your client or your customer in order to take care of that that billing routine. So there's a probably a better time than a worse time. So it'd be really interesting to see what you guys wind up with data wise. It says, you know, before having turned this feature on or this component on, here's what it looked like, and here's how much that needle moved once we did. And started making those recommendations, started uh, in incorporating them into the routine, um, because uh, obviously that's the objective, right? The stated goals we're trying to like ultimately handle and, and make improvements to that accounts receivable workflow. Well, and that's why we 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 always want we want to start with the expressed understanding of what's the job to be done here, because all this technology yeah. is really cool. You can you can use data in all kinds of yeah. you know. Fantastic ways, but you know we exist because at the end of the day, firms need to insulate their financial health and and speed up their their cash flows or cash run businesses. They they need to get paid for the work that they do, and they need to like balance that reality with you know satisfying and delighting clients, both in the service and then the experience administratively with the firm. So you know faster cash flow, saving partner time, delivering a great client experience. Well, there are a lot of things we've thought about doing that we've actually not done because we couldn't distill them down into being contributory to one of those three outcomes. So it's um it's really important that we ground ourselves in the same way. And you talk about this a lot. Any kind of automation needs to correlate to like a clear business value outcome, right? So again, a million things we could all do. What are the things we should do, right? And I think that's a that's an important differentiator as well, too. I mean, my whole life has been in technology and software engineering and stuff like that. Um, not too dissimilar to some of your expertise as well, too, but I've seen a lot of people try to push solutions, which are solutions to problems that don't exist, right? So oh, the sure. fact that you're reinforcing jobs to be done framework and making sure that it starts with the end in mind, right? That how is it going to move the needle for the accounting firm? That's a key. I'll make sure our listeners know this. That's a key differentiator <laughs> between what it sounds like you guys are doing and Anduin and a lot of other applications of technology that I've seen. So that that makes it can make or break you know an experience for a customer. So that uh, that means a lot. There's uh, and, and I say this having again came to the the CPA profession from the healthcare space and before that touched pretty much every industry there is. Um, there's a lot of hammers looking for nails, right? Exactly. So, well said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well said. Super well said. Amazing. Uh, thank you, Pat, and uh, thank you for being here to share your knowledge and experience. Super excited by. Anduin's progress and success. Uh, I'm super happy, obviously, to have you back as well, too, to continue to tell the story as you guys are growing and helping more firms. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share before I ask you a couple of quick closing questions? Um, I would, well, first of all, I'd say thank you for having me. Uh, of course, big fan. And I, I like the, the flag you're waving in the profession around. Again, job to be done, technology. Gosh, if, if people yeah. leave today, if, if if they leave with nothing other than kind of that framework for, for evaluating applications of tech, I think that's the right one. Um, no, I mean, I would say the, the, the one thing I'd invite is if people are curious about what Anduin's doing, um, whether applications of our technology, just how we're, we're seeing the world and how the professional evolve with tech, we've got some great resources on the website. Our, our team has been phenomenal about sharing the things we've learned, videos, webinars. We do it all. So Anduin.ai, good, good site to check out. Uh, kind of shameless plug there. And then um, just the, the question I often get is, whoa, 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 okay, this sounds cool, but like, who are, who are your buyers? Who are your customers? Who do you work with? And I would say our best fit customers, you can see them on our website, um, top 400 firms, although we work with a number of firms outside of the top 400 as well. And that, that number is growing pretty quickly. And we're typically engaged with you know, the senior most head of finance, senior most head of operations, and we're the managing partner uh, themselves. What's been interesting is some of our biggest uh, evangelists and biggest fans have been kind of the, the service line leaders, 
the partners themselves who kind of bring us into the firm to say, I'm burning three days a week or three days a month doing this collections and billing stuff can, 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 can end when relieve that. So we want to talk to anybody at a top 400 firm, Sean, that's what I would say. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, we'll link to that, all of that in the show notes as well, too. And then uh, I think you provided some examples of each at the moment, but I'll make sure I get them specifically from you and any others you would add as well, too. Are there any resources that you would recommend for folks where they can go to learn more about anything you talked about here today or just anyone in general outside of uh, the website? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of, you know, uh, most of what comes out, heck, all of what comes out from accounting today. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say something they are amazing. Know in terms of just a good resource for for read on the street CPA practice advisor as well. Those are those are often things that are circulating throughout our team. There's a great white paper, and we can link to it maybe in the show notes that explores Definitely. this concept of mutual learning that I would I would absolutely encourage people to read. It's actually quite approachable in terms of explaining the tech, and I think it if if, if like here I was talking about job to be done, and then read this paper and understand kind of pragmatic application yep. of AI. That that would be a really good kind of primer. Yeah, that would be, and 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 that would likely spring ideas, conversations, and people want to continue. We can throw my contact info in there, and we can continue discussions on a one-to-one basis. Yeah, excellent. And that was we'll link to those as well. And that was going to be my last question as well. Is like uh, I know you gave somewhat of a profile, but I want to get clear on that as well too, in terms of and also next steps for anybody um, who should be thinking about reaching out to you, and how should they get in touch? What would be the best way? Um, anybody at a top 400 firm who wants kind of more time to do the highest kind of creative output work they can think of, and they feel they're getting pulled into administrative stuff on the, the billing side, he can help. And I, I, I want to speak to, 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 to that person. Um, and Sean, forgive me, I lost the thread. The second part of your question. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, that profile is perfect. And then what's the best way for them to get in touch? Like if anybody wants to reach out to you or Anduin, what's the best way to, to get in contact? Best way to reach out is um, send an email to team at Anduin.ai. And we're, we get back to people, you know, sometimes instantaneously. And then let's, we can put my personal contact info. Heck, it's already out there publicly. It's patrick.morell, two R's, two L's, M-O-R-R-E-L-L at Anduin.ai. Shoot me a note. Happy to chat. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you, Pat. We'll link to everything that we mentioned here in the show notes so that they're available as well. And thanks for being here, telling the annual story and keep up the excellent work, man. We're super excited to watch you guys grow. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. Great to talk to you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Accounting Automation. I hope you found it valuable. I help accounting firms scale their profit exponentially without needing to hire any additional accountants. So if your firm is in growth mode and can't keep up, I'd love to talk to you more about how I can empower your firm to do more with less through automation and technology. To learn more, visit my website, nextstep.io, or email me, sean at nextstep.io. That's sean, S-E-A-N, at nextstep, N-X-T-S-T-E-P.io.